Bahrain qualifying is nearly upon us and the drivers look as if they're all geared up to go. I expect we'll be getting underway very shortly. So then, Ants, it's another Grand Prix weekend, another exciting qualifying session ahead of us. What are you going to be looking out for over the next few minutes? The first question is going to be who can avoid making mistakes. There isn't much margin for error in qualifying, and you have to bear in mind that the track conditions may have changed since practice, particularly as we've had a few support races in the meantime. If the brake bias settings, for example, don't take this into account, it's extremely easy to lock up a front wheel and cause a flat spot. Just like that, your lap's ruined and you've wasted a set of tyres to boot. What is going on guys and welcome to the Bahrain Grand Prix. This is part two of the 2019 Formula One career mode. Um, sorry, it's been such a long time since the other episode. I have actually had this recorded and waiting to go. Uh, just haven't had time to do voiceover for it. However, that's going to change because actually for the next race, it's going to be live commentary. And I've done that on purpose just to see how it is. Okay, and it also, we'll it also means that car. you get more of my emotion when I'm actually racing. It's a bit hard to show emotion on replays of what I've done. So yeah, I've d I decided for the Chinese Grand Prix to do live um, live com so you can see more of the emotion, especially when I'm overtaking. And you're definitely going to see that for the next race. But we're pretty much here and for the Bahrain Grand Prix in qualifying. Um, as always, trying to set a, a banker lap time just to see if and where we need to improve as well. Um, it definitely helps with the delta to actually tell us that we are slower in these corners we're faster in these corners and yeah so you're gonna see um i think we do about two runs because the car just didn't feel great as you can see i'm just taking the corners ever so cautiously going out wide missing the uh the racing line locking up a lot um as lucas weber uh, sets the fastest lap um so i don't think this lap's going to be anything fast in terms of what we can truly do i think we're, we're going to qualify not on the top, like not in the in pretty much the top 10, I can tell you that. The car is just not there quite yet. Um, we do definitely show in the race that we can be there, but yeah, qualifying is just not there just yet. We might be there for some of the races, and as you can see, the car just kept going out wide. Um, eventually, the tyres just gave up, and so that pretty much ruined that lap, um, and I think I just start to ease off trying to get ready for the next flying lap um, still trying to see if I can set a fast time though so it's not gonna be anything perfect I knew well I know I'm gonna have to make up a lot of time in that final sector alone um, as we cross the line it is only P7 but that's gonna change as we now jump across to the final or actually we didn't make any difference I think I think that was our only fastest lap so that's gonna be P16 or I can't see from here I think it's P16 so that's been qualifying and we're gonna go straight into the race now there's something in the Bahrain air tonight and I'm not just talking about the sand our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the Sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a Grand Prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past. Formi Bahrain has showed us many times in the past though, Anthony Davidson, that a good strategy will only take you so far. Beyond that, you need good racecraft and you need good consistency. And a little bit of luck too, I'd say. This is one of those circuits where the safety car always seems to come out just at the right time to condense the field together and mix up the cars on different strategies. It's hard on brakes, it's tough on fuel, and the main overtaking opportunity is down into turn one, where it's easy to outbreak your opponent and potentially have a bit of argy-bargy as well. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Pierre Gasly, and Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Butler, Weber, and Kevin Magnussen, Perez, Rojan, Kimi Raikkonen, and Kubica. Mitchell, Russell, Alexander Albon, and Daniel Ricciardo. They've taken a grid penalty. Norris and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. 
So it looks like we actually out-qualify our teammate Lando Norris. Uh, Ricardo did have some penalties, which helps us, but doesn't help him, um, especially since he's the Renault power engine and we are running Renault in McLaren. So not great if it's a power unit problem. Um, hopefully it's not, though. Uh, so we're going to go straight into the race. I think, yeah, we're going to skip the formation lap and go straight into the race now as we have three lights, four lights, five lights lights out and away we go and that was a very long light sequence but now as you can see p16 as russell out of nowhere just oh kibitza sorry out of nowhere just takes it down the inside as we go now down the inside ricardo look at that for a dive bomb he looked like he just braked early and then all of a sudden just decides to go back on the power and down the inside cuts the corner as well so i wonder if he got a penalty or a warning for that that was a pretty obvious corner cut um, as we're side by side with Russell down the outside of Perez and that was very close as I was mainly focused on that Williams but Perez is still there on our inside he's going to have the inside line but we're going to go around the outside he's going to have to yeah he's still there but now he's backed out and that's P15 we've got Ricardo ahead of us and the Williams ahead of Ricardo and I can say as of the Chinese Grand Prix it looked like Williams have now gone back to their normal um, normal slot but it was different weather conditions so We'll find out in the future races if they've done a patch to fix the Williams. Uh, halfway through lap one though, still P15, we still got Perez behind us. Ricardo's starting to make a gap now, but he's got a train ahead of him as we lock the front wheel ever so slightly into that corner. Hopefully it's not going to cost us too much in this corner as we go out very wide. Had to go off the pound, definitely off the circuit as you can see the car just did not want to stick through that corner and especially the same as qualifying it just did not want to stick so aerodynamic wise i think we need to improve there to increase downforce uh, through those fast corners ricardo almost had to go at ricardo down the inside but i thought the better of it because that williams was sitting there and ricardo would have just um, collected me if he went a normal racing line through there and now that's the force sorry not forcing it that's the um racing point of Sergio Perez down the inside with Slipstream. We thought about it again, but he just cuts us off on the defensive mark. And now we have Albon behind us. Um, so that has been lap one. Lap two now, we've caught up to Kibitza. I think he got overtaken by Perez at one stage. And now we on, sorry, lap four, uh, DRS on that Toro Rosso. Look at it go down our inside with ease, but we're gonna get them on the brakes maybe. He definitely looks like he went deeper and almost looked like he was going to hit the back of that Williams. And we got an excellent exit on the curb to overtake that Toro Rosso, but he's going to get slipstream. We're going to go back into... Oh, sorry, he's going to get DRS. We're going to go back into his slipstream. Almost collected the rear of it, just like what we did to a racing point. But now, look at that Toro Rosso. It is going down the inside. I love the AI in this game. It, they're so much more aggressive, so much more fun to race with. They just... They're unbelievable compared to last year's game. They they definitely do like to race a lot more and they don't give up the positions that easily, but that has been P14. Uh, lap six, we're coming into the pit at the end of this lap. We've got a few cars ahead of us. Some of them are in the dirty racing line, which is interesting. Uh, two of them up ahead. I think that's Perez and someone else almost collected each other. Uh, looks like Kibitz is coming into the pit, so we're going to come in the pits as well. And I've always got this pit box or the pit limiter not perfectly timed especially if we come from a fast corner you got to get on the uh, brakes as late as possible but can we actually jump the williams it's a pretty good pit stop by the mclaren boys the williams is just ahead of us i thought we could get the jump on them but yeah how can you beat a williams that definitely are setting times in the pit stop so that has been the first and final pit stop for us this race um thank you jeff uh so Kibitz ahead of us, Gasly behind us, so uh, I'm not sure if the Red Bull, we go out, definitely, we definitely go out wide, so cold tyres, but I'm not sure if the Red Bull um, has actually pitted in Kibitz for some reason, we've caught up to him, is he struggling with tyre temperatures or something? On lap 8, now we're, we're all over the rear of him, he's obviously had an issue of some sort, um, not sure what it was, but Ricardo is catching up to us, unless he got stuck in traffic from cars coming out of the pits or something and caused damage by that but Ricardo almost took advantage of us then because we definitely didn't have the perfect corner now he's going to be in slipstream and DRS and you can see that 
proximity marker just start to glow and almost turn red as he gets ever so closer to us. Uh, Kibitz is starting to pull away, but it looks like we might get him. They they are definitely don't seem too strong in that flying corner, but we also don't have the uh, downforce to keep us from going off the track. But now in the slip train of Kibitz, our teammate Lando Norris is in the pits. So we're going to have a few cars coming out of the pits around the same time we're going to go by. Uh, Kibitza goes a bit slow into that corner, gives Ricardo the uh, the edge on the exit as well. So might have fun with Kibitza, and he's always went a bit defensive with Kibitza. Um, but that was a very clean overtake, and I think we're going to have a replay of that possibly. I'm not sure if we do end up showing a replay. It was very clean. Um, I think at the end you'll see the replay of it. Um, so in the highlights you'll see a replay of it, and it was very clean. If I do say so myself, as I think that's the third time I've said it. Uh, on lap 13 now, coming up to the end of this race, I think we're going to stay on board for the final lap as we now have a go on the Haas of Romain Grosjean. Uh, we get the job done with DRS, and yeah, you can see that force, uh, that, that racing point behind us also looking for an overtake. And I was too busy watching them that I forgot about breaking for the first corner, so that could have been terrible on our final lap. Uh, P11 at the moment we have Raikkonen ahead who's just in the points at this stage so we're sitting outside the points we're missing one point we haven't finished a race inside the points so far in this career mode um, and now Perez is all over us so he got past Grosjean pretty fast uh, but then again it was DRS on the straight so we do go a bit deep into that corner Perez thought about it but had to also correct his line um Raikkonen is still ahead of us so I don't think we're going to catch up to Raikkonen with half a lap to go but Perez we're gonna to have to defend from Perez as he's been pretty racy um in this race he's just been going at and attacking and defending and it's been crazy to see what he's been doing um but Charles Leclerc finally he should have won that Bahrain race in real life but he finally gets his race win um yeah so that's that's the ferrari's race win i can't remember who won the last race i think it was a ferrari as well um uh, yeah it definitely was a ferrari last race so that's going to be p11 as we cross the line Raikkonen in p10 and we're going to hold it off from perez in p12 as we cross the line in p11 thank you for all your hard work out there that was a strong drive and a good finish well done Here's our winner, pulling their Ferrari into Park Fermi. What a fantastic race it was. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this race. As I said before, it's just the next race is going to be a lot more fun. It's going to be a live commentary, so you're going to see a lot more of my emotion in it. Um, I can definitely say it is a very interesting race next for the Chinese Grand Prix. So hopefully you guys look forward to it. Um, I had a lot of fun racing in it. Bahrain was a bit so-and-so. It was very much sitting in the same position for a lot of it. As you saw, we did jump to the end quite uh quite quickly there was just nothing happening in the race except for a few overtakes at the start and pit pretty much pit stops um so yeah, until then guys i'll see you next time and if you do enjoy these series let me know i want to keep doing it i just have to find time with work and all that but if you do enjoy it feel free to like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time and hope you guys enjoy the highlights